Hey there, welcome to another episode of Normal Wear and Tear or Charge That Deposit. I'm your host, Steve Welty. I'm with Jimmy today, local policing manager at Good Life. Jimmy, how you doing? Good, how about yourself, Steve? Excellent, thank you, brother. All right, first thing we're going to look at today is whew, this damage right here. What do we got? Normal wear and tear, security deposit deduction. Uh, this would be a security deposit uh, deduction here. These are uh, more than normal wear and tear. There's multiple little uh, nail holes here in the mm. wall. Um, so yeah, that would be a tenant charge to patch and paint that. So how do we charge the tenant in this case, Jimmy? So yeah, the way we handle paint and tenant charges is if there's any paint that's above normal wear and tear, as you can see here, this would be above normal wear and tear. Um, we charge tenants based on paint having a useful life of three years. So depending on how long the tenants uh, lived in the, the unit for, so the longer they obviously lived in there, the less they'd get charged for the painting. Um, but yeah, we'd charge them to uh, patch these little holes and kind of touch up the paint there. All right, so it's not a full charge, tenants out there, you just do get a break. Landlords out there know that that's the way to do it. Stay out of trouble, stay out of arguments and lawsuits. All right, Jimmy, as we enter one of the bedrooms, it smells like an animal was sacrificed here. Is uh, that what you're getting? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting smell in here, Steve. Let's let's get to the bottom of this. Um, so as you can see here on the carpet, it looks pretty stained. Um, as, and if you were here, you could smell the smell in here as well. Um, but there's only one way to really tell uh, what's going on here at the carpet. So you got to take out our pliers here and... Uh, the trick is to always find a corner of the carpet there. Oh boy, Jimmy, I don't know if I'm ready. Yep. And then you can pull up the carpet here. And as you can see here down Ooh. underneath on the carpet, you can see some staining there underneath the carpet here as well as on the pad there. Um, and from what I'm seeing here, this looks like this could be a pet stain. Um, so yeah, the best way to get rid of a pet stain here on the carpet is obviously you need to replace all the carpet and the pads. Um, as well as you can actually do a pet enzyme treatment on the mm -hmm. subfloor to get rid of that smell to make sure if you're going to spend all the money uh, to get new carpet, you want to make sure it stays nice. So that's what we're going to be doing here in this bedroom. All right. Well, let's just hope it's a pet stain. No one lost their life. We don't have a blue <laughs> light. So Jimmy, I'm not even going to go to the judges on this one. I think this is a tenant charge. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Steve. So yeah, we'll definitely um, have to charge the tenant a portion of the amount here to uh, replace the carpet. Uh, the way it works with carpet replacement is actually is prorated on a seven-year useful life. Um, so I'll need to reach out to the owner and confirm uh, the date that the carpet was installed, and then we can uh, charge the tenant accordingly based on the age of the carpet. That's huge. No matter how bad it is, you still got to use useful life. Be fair. Follow the law. Let's go see, find the next casualty. All right, Jimmy, you've got two legal deductions. You're 2-0. and o. We're on the third item. We've got a bent window screen, it looks like here. Tell us about it. Yep, so as you can see here on this window, the window screen is bent and actually looks pretty broken. Um, so it's actually required by law that we provide window screens on all windows inside a property. Um, so yeah, this one would in fact be a tenant charge to replace that window screen. Judges, he says tenant charge, what do you got? Bing! Ooh, three for three, Jimmy, <laughs> nice job. All right, Jimmy, we've got something ugly down here. What, is, what are we looking at? Yes, yeah, so as you can see here on the wall, it looks like there's a little scuff in the paint there, which kind of looks like it could be from a furniture mark here. Um, in my opinion on this one, I would say this is not a tenant charge. This is normal wear and tear. Um, it's expected that tenants own furniture and that furniture can occasionally scuff up the wall. So yeah, nothing to worry about here. This is just normal wear and tear. All right, he says nothing to worry about normal wear and tear. Judges, Bing! Jimbo, nice job. Yeah. Save that tenant money, save a lawsuit for the landlord, and we're going to move on to the next one. All right, we've got a loose little fella here, Jimmy. What are we looking at? Yes, as you can see here, it uh, looks like this doorknob's a little bit loose here. So technically, this could be a tenant charge. Um, but here at Good Life, we like to uh, try to help the tenants out. And if, if we can fix it ourselves, we obviously get a tenant charge. Um, so something like this is really simple. It's just we need to tighten two screws on that, and yeah. that's it. So yeah, yeah. this isn't something we would have charged to the tenant. Beautiful. All right, so Jimmy says, normal wear and tear judges. All right, we're rolling now. We wouldn't charge a tenant for this. We can fix it ourselves. Let's keep moving. All right, we're here at the kitchen, opening up the fridge. What do we got? Yes, yeah, so as you can see here, Steve, it looks like there's some crumbs and some stains here on the uh, the drawers here in the um, refrigerator. Um, so kind of regarding cleaning and the security deposit, whenever we uh, move a tenant into the property, we make sure that we deep clean the property first. So that includes inside all of the appliances, um, as well as all the surfaces inside the unit. Um, so yeah, if there's any sort of uh, cleaning that's still required after the tenants move out, uh, this can be charged to the security deposit. Very nice. Judges? Ding! All right, Jimmy. All right, Jimmy, we're in the double final super duper last round. And we've got a sticky one. For all the marbles, talk us through this. We've got a hole, it looks like. 
Yes, as you can see here, Steve, uh, looks like we have a little hole on the cabinet there from what appears to be uh, the door here kind of mm. swinging open and hitting that cabinet there. Oh, Lord. This one's a tricky one here. So if you look a little deeper into the door here, as you can see, there is a door stop up here that uh, looks like it's not properly um, set up. So this actually could have been avoided. So in this case here, uh, I'm not going to tenant charge for this one. Judges? You tell me out there. Should we charge or no? So it's important to know the difference between normal wear and tear and a security deposit deduction because that money is somebody's money. And so you got to take it seriously. It's not a slush fund just to go fix a bunch of stuff in your house when a tenant moves out. You got to know the rules. You got to know the useful life like Jimmy showed us. So Jimmy, any parting words for how tenants can get their security deposit back in full? Um, so yeah, my last tip to get your deposit back in full would be to actually schedule a pre-move out inspection with either your landlord or your manager uh, before you move out. Uh, so it's required by law that the landlord or uh, manager offer this inspection for you. And basically what it is, is before you move out, you can schedule an inspection uh, where the landlord or manager will go through the whole property with you and determine any items that could potentially be charged to the security deposit. Um, and that way you'll have the opportunity to fix those items before uh, you fully move out of your property. Jimmy, that's beautiful advice. We want everyone treated fairly and good outcomes for everyone. So thanks for playing normal wear and tear or charge that deposit. And I hope you guys had fun at home there today.